Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Covered and the Law. With me, Samson Ladi Anyanini. How will you take it? Or what will you do? Or what is wrong if you were asked to proceed on leave and suspicion or upon testing positive for COVID-19? How is your leave entitlement or leave schedule managed in your company? Are you being asked to go on leave because of COVID-19 or some other reasons? How is that your entitlement and right affected? How must it be dealt with? Don't go anywhere. We have experts to help you on this question. You're welcome back. This is Covered and the Law. This is your legal light and help law in these trying times. Let's get to our case of the day for today. My leave was planned to coincide with my wedding, so my fiancé also managed to get her leave scheduled for the same month of August. I have been unwell on two occasions in the last month. I am asthmatic, but now my boss is acting like my coughs are symptoms of COVID-19. I just returned from the hospital and she has forced me to take my leave this month. She's saying it will give me time to treat myself. Why should people who have known my situation for years, years now, treat me like I have COVID-19? This is a big blow to me and my fiancé because of how we have planned our marriage and honeymoon in August. Does the law allow her to do this? What can I do? Help us. COVID and the law. And this is from Maoli. So, let's get to meet our guest. And our guests are Papa Kwesi Dankwa, who is former head of legal and administration at the Trace Union Congress here in Ghana. Uh, Papa was with us graciously last week. Thank you very much for making the time to join us again this week, Papa. Great. Okay, so Papa needs to work on his sound. Then, yes, <clears throat> am I on now? Great, you are. Great, thanks. Right. Yeah, also, thank you very much, Samson. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Also joining us, and both of them are joining us from outside of the jurisdiction, Ernest Osei Afo. He is a lawyer and member of the Institute of Human Resource Management Practitioners, Ghana. Ernest, thank you for making the time to join us. Thank you for having me, Samson. And okay. good afternoon to your listen to your right. viewers. Right. And interesting, the both of you lawyers <laughs> who are into labor practice as experts have both written on this subject matter. So my guests can be assured that today they will receive the best of legal education on this question of leave. You are here on COVID and the law. This is your legal light and help law in these trying times. You're welcome back. And as you know, on COVID and the law, we educate, create awareness, empower. We don't argue. Right after our guests have assisted us with understanding the questions of leave and how it ought to be handled by our employers and the employees, on the other hand, we will give you the opportunity to join in and to also ask your questions, regardless of whether or not they fall in line with Maui's question. Let's start with 
Ernest Afo. Now, Ernest, having read um, Mauli's letter, what are the issues that come at you that need to be looked at? Well, thank you so much, Samson. And um, I think the issues are barely um, two in two folds. The first issue I see is um, whether um, the empl employer has a right to interrupt the leave that he is uh, pursuing. I also see the issue of sick related, maybe COVID-19 related right. um, sick leave also popping up in this issue. We just read. So um, I'll look at it from these two major perspectives. Of course, there are some sub issues that will be discussed along the line. All right. So I don't know whether you want me to go into the issues right away. Yes, please do. Sure. So um, you have to look at what the Labor Act says about leave. Right. And basically, if you go to Section 20, um, I'll try as much as possible not to be too legalist and speak um, normal language, All right. English. All right. Yes. Yeah, so Section 20 of the Labor Act provides that every employee who has worked for a year or any cumulative period of up to a year, however it is reckoned, is entitled to um, a period of leave of 15 working days of, for the year that he has worked. That's a minimum threshold. Um, the employer and the employee have the right to enhance that minimum threshold. So, okay. for instance, um, the employer and the employee can decide to give themselves, uh, to give the employee um, 27 working days, 30 working days, 40 working days, 42 working days, as we see in a lot of the public service mm. and civil service. All right. So, the 15 working days is just the minimum. And that is the annual leave that the employee is entitled to. All right. There are other leave that employee may also be entitled to in accordance with the act. And we have um, sick leave, we have um, maternity leave, which, and then um, these two leave are mandatory. So if you are sick and you are certified by a medical doctor, you are, you are entitled to this um, sick leave. If you are pregnant, for instance, you are also entitled to a minimum of 12 weeks of um, pregnancy leave or maternity leave. And um, there are other leave like paternity leave, like educational leave, and the rest that the employer can give. But those ones are not um, statutory. They are not provided specifically for. So mm -hmm. it's a matter of contract. If your employer gives you um, exam leave, or paternity leave, it is just a matter of just being magnanimous with you. Okay. Now, having said that, so look the, at the so issue. first, first, the leave you refer to, which you say the minimum is fifteen days, is yes, what you, is leave. what you call as the mandatory, which yes. the employer cannot do anything about. Yes. Yes. The employer cannot decide that they want to give you less than fifteen. Uh, days of leave, correct? No way. Great. The employer cannot give you 14 days, cannot give you 12 days, cannot give you 10 days. The minimum is 15 working days for the year. However, for the, for the year. however they yes. can agree to enhance it. Yes, please. Great. Can. And then you also mentioned that by the law, we are not only entitled to the mandatory annual leave, but yes. by way of agreement, we can also enjoy sick leave, we can enjoy study leave, or however you call it, and several other leave. Is that the case? Yes, but let me distinguish between what you can contract and what is mandatorily provided for. All right. Um, sick leave, for instance, mm -hmm. is a mandatory leave Great. that the employee is entitled right. um, when the employee is certified as unwell. Great. Maternity leave is also mandatory, mm -hmm. and the minimum uh, maternity leave is 12 weeks. Okay. So if you are, I mean, you are a woman and you are in maternity, you are automatically entitled to 12 weeks of leave. Right. The employer cannot do anything about it, but you can agree to enhance it. Mm. But the other leave, like exam week, mm -hmm. paternity leave for the for the fathers, mm -hmm. and related activity, I mean leave, can be enhanced or can be agreed between right. the employer and the employee. Okay. So now proceed because you are about to now launch into 
having given us the general you know position of the leaves that one is entitled mandatorily and by agreement what we find in Maoli's situation okay thank you so um, if you go to section 27 of the act it provides that the employer is entitled to manage or administer the leave portfolio as i call it mm -hmm. um, it means that the employer at the in most cases in, or in practice what you see is that at the beginning of the year the employer will invite employees to indicate the number of days or the specific dates that they would want to proceed on leave. Right. So in Maoli's case, for instance, he identified August as the most suitable period to proceed on leave. Right. And that was recorded. So that is okay, and he has to proceed in that manner. Mm. However, the act is very specific that the leave, when agreed, it's not cast in stone. The employer is entitled to interrupt the leave when the um, the circumstances of the work requires that he so in interrupt the leave. For instance, COVID-19 brings a lot of changes and a lot of unexpected um, scenarios in our work schedules and so many things. So maybe the nature of your work, you are required to be there in a particular part of the of the of the work schedule an mm. employer realizes that he needs you he's entitled to interrupt that leave and ask you to come back to work mm. but when the employer interrupts the leave he is required to do two things the first thing is he should foot the the bill for so interrupting the leave so for instance if you are having your vacation in uh, maybe bermuda <laughs> or one of the islands in the Caribbean, <laughs> right. he's entitled to probably purchase a plane ticket for you. And if you have paid for your hotel bills that mm. you can't do anything about it, mm -hmm. he's supposed to maybe meet that bill that is attributable to that interruption. Okay. So that is one. Mm. And the second thing is that once he interrupts the leave, he's supposed to restore that interruption. So if you were left with three days unspent, that three days will be carried forward to a different um Period All right. in so, time. so, so, NS, can you hold on there for us and let's go to your friend? And I know you are very good friends. <laughs> oh, um, yes. <laughs> um, and thanks for bringing us together this afternoon. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All of you from different worlds at this moment because of COVID 19. Um, and then, uh, coincidentally, the two of you have written quite extensively educative pieces on the question of leave because of what has happened. Uh, happening in the country now, but it is good to note that the education you supply does not go into the politics of what is going on, and that is the reason yeah. we have you on the show today. Now, Papa, Thank you. having yeah. read Mauli's um, letter yourself and mm -hmm. his complaint, where do you take it from? And I'm talking to you more particularly as someone who worked and still works at the global level representing labor, workers, yeah. making sure that their rights are always upheld. Yes, um, thank you very much, um, Samson, and uh, nice to see you, NS. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I agree totally with the issues raised by NS and his summary of of the law in respect of this specific case. Mm. But immediately I would go to sick leave and then he being directed to take the leave. Right. So sick leave, I would take, I would take it in two angles. So there's a routine provision of the law, which is what um, NS mentioned in respect of section 24 that if you have if if you are sick it is certified you have a the right to you're entitled to to take um take it off take off from work because of that mm. and it should not be deducted from your leave your annual leave your planned leave okay so the sick leave will be days i will take separate from what i'm entitled for precisely. the whole year precisely okay is separated, you know, the law is clear that it should not affect the annual leave. Mm. And from our view, COVID is 
an occupational disease in this city. You know, we, we, we have characterized COVID and, and the WHO has 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 done so also mm. um as an occupational disease it's a public health pandemic and an occupational disease because of the way work is organized so any sickness i mean if you are covid positive and you have to isolate it is sick leave it it ought not to be considered as your, your leave. leave exactly mm. i mean it's, it is sick because you are sick. All right. COVID is a pub, it's a it's a sickness. So you Papa, Papa, a, help, Papa, a, help us virus. here. Sorry for this interruption, yeah. but help us here. No, 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 it's fine. It's, can, it helps me too. Can 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 this be done only with the public service or even in my private employment? If my employer uh, feels that the only opportunity he has for me is to take part of my annual leave off having tested positive, but Let's note that in this case, there has not been a test of any positive uh, COVID-19 for COVID-19. Yes, but there, there appears to be an assumption that because he's coughing, yes, he may have COVID, right. and so he should proceed. Right. If he has to do that, then he is sick. Mm -hmm. He's pre you know, so at this because he he, he doesn't have, um, have a positive test, mm -hmm. he's presumed sick. Okay. So the action to take him off the workplace is because he's sick all right and that ought not to affect the planned leave so mm -hmm. that's my the first leg of my my analysis can you know, this, of the situation can, in, in relation to that can this happen only in public because no 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 people in, think that so, there are things you yeah. can get when you are in the public service and there are things you cannot get when you are in the private uh, uh, enterprise so employment law or labor rights law intervenes to regulate the employment relationship, whether you are in the private sector or the public sector. Okay. So that's, this is the basic, huh, generally. Mm. Mm. Once there is an employment law legislation, once there's a statutory obligation of protection for labor, mm. it affects you whether you are in the private sector or in the public sector. Okay. Yeah. The things that are peculiar to you in the public sector are usually constitutional. Mm. So, in the and the Public Services Commission uh, uh, articles of the law, there are specific things. For example, termination without cause. Mm. That is that is a specific thing that you know you are protected from because you are in the public sector. All right. If that provision finds itself in the Labor Act to say you cannot be terminated without reason, then that would apply to both categories of employees all right you know so that's but in in the case of leave mm. i do not know that there is any special arrangement other than what is in the it's in the labor act okay. and that applies to both so ns, NS wanted to add ns something. ns was was educating us about the fact that the law requires the leave to be uninterrupted it ought to be continuous however the law allows room for the employer to interrupt the leave Except yeah. that when the employer interrupts your leave, they will take the cost involved in interrupting the leave and the unspent period of the leave must then later, arrangement must be made so that you spend the leave. In yes. Mauli's case, he has not started the leave and it is being interrupted. It was planned for August. Can the employer do it the manner he has done now, she has done now? I don't know what NS thinks about this, but I think from 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 my from the analysis I have done, I think his August leave, in my view, is untouched unless the employer is insisting that he has to take his August leave as his sick COVID leave. You know. Right. So if that is if my understanding of the scenario is correct, then his August leave ought not to be affected. Okay. You know. Yeah. But, what does, yeah, what because does, the employer what does is NS... proceed, proceed because you have COVID. Right. If the employer is insisting that mm. way and without a test, but say go, mm. then you are going because you are sick, mm. in my view. Right. So, Ernest, is this something the two of you agree on as far as the law is concerned, that even though from the tone of the letter, 
he is being asked to take the leave he had planned annual for the annual mandatory leave in August for his wedding and honeymoon, but now having to take it for his sick leave. Is it the case that he, sh he will still go on this leave and in August he can go ahead with his uh, annual leave? And if that does not happen, what can he do? Yes, thank you, Samson. Before I react to that question, let me just point us to some exceptions that the Labor Act provides mm. um, in terms of who it applies to. If you look at Section 1 of the Labor Act, its applicability is given. Right. And the only exceptions are the armed forces, the police service, the prison service, and security and intelligence agencies under the Intelligence Agencies Act. Okay. So with this particular category of workers, what we are discussing does not apply to them. Right. Because DS is a special arrangement under their respective laws. So if you are in the army, if you are in the police, police if you are in the intelligence security, service, intelligence services, it does not apply to you. No. Apart from this category of uh, workers in the country, the law applies yeah. to all. Yes, please. Private yes, public or public. And private. Thank you very yes, much. Exactly. Please go ahead. You're welcome. Mm. Yes, so now let's go to what um, the COVID has brought. Um, I would look at this slightly from a different perspective. I think um, sick leave, technically, the employment, the, the act provides that if you are proceeding on a sick leave, you are supposed to provide a certified medical report. So once the doctor gives you a certificate of um, being unwell, then you can proceed on leave. If there is a national emergency, as the president provided, maybe when we we're all locked down right. and nobody could go out to work or we're back from going out to work, mm. in that case, we are automatically out of the office. So we are not working, mm -hmm. even though technically we are still in employment. Mm. If you don't want to maintain employment, there are other things that you do. However, when the lockdown period is over and we have all resumed work, however, I mean, staggered it might be, I think we have to look at it critically because, for instance, in my establishment, I'm just giving an example. In my establishment, I have agreed with my staff that maybe 50% should be at work every week and the remaining 50% should work from home. But when I analyze the work, maybe those working from home are not going to be as productive as I would expect. As a manager of my leave, I think it will be within my right to instruct or advise certain category of my workers to take their leave within this period. Okay. So instead of waiting for August, where I'm not too sure how the workflow will be, I am entitled, and I believe the law allows me or permits me, to instruct a certain category of work and um, workforce. And um, I have to say that I even advised one organization to, when we discussed this issue, I mean, about two months ago, when okay. the COVID was very high, yeah. I advised them that what you can do, and they had a very high volume of leave, <laughs> accumulated leave mm. scenarios. So I just okay. advised them that, just analyze your staff categories. Mm. Look at those who are essential and those who you can actually manage without in this period mm -hmm. and advise them to take their leave. And right. I believe in that category, mm. you are right right within your, 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 your stride mm. to let them proceed accordingly. Mm. Right. Thank you. Um, the, only, the, only, <laughs> the only caveat I'll bring here is, you know, he, NS, is, NS is right, but I think you, you should be, we should be mindful that the leave also is meant for rest and leisure mm -hmm. all right yeah which you know must be tied to the expect, um, legitimate expectations of the worker in this case if the worker had has given you prior notice of his wedding and a very, very culturally important thing that happens in the, you know, in one's, well, one's lifetime, in time, mm -hmm. you know, in one's lifetime, then it is important that if the employer will disrupt that, that the employer should, dis and the employee should discuss 
how that uh, culturally or socially important function mm. would would take place. Mm. So my my suggestion to both the employer and the employee would be fine if because of the so this is the different scenario NS has 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 painted right that's correct and and if the if because of the COVID issues you you are not sure how work is going to be you want to rearrange workload work schedule because of that you guys you you must come to work you must go and leave now instead of August. Mm. Can we consider a special leave, which is provided for also under 23, to say, look, come now or go home now. But when it comes to your 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 event, this is what we will we will arrange a special leave with my with our permission, with pay, and then you take it. Mm. Because when when there's a when there's an emergency, as, as Professor Kubada will say. You know, this law is meant, it, this law assumes that both a, a worker and employer are in one boat. So mm. there's a, there's, you know, they, they are cooperating and coordinating together. Okay. And I think the interests here must be managed in such a way that one party does not unnecessarily suffer. Mm. You know, mm. so if it is workload related and there's nothing you can do about it as an employer, and you want the gentleman to go on leave, you must recognize the importance of that event socially, for leisure, culturally, and give him an arrangement which the law allows you to. So that is that is how I would deal with NSTs. Because, you know, employment is a relationship, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the employer must be conscientious, Mm. must seek the interest. You know, if you read the law, Mm. the the employer must seek the interest of the employee. The employee must work conscientiously. Mm. And I think this is one of the clear cases where if the situation is that because of workload and so on, you need to rearrange the leave schedule, you must not harm and injure the gentleman's arrangement, which you knew before Mm. and which you can make some accommodations Right. About. So, Ernest, um, can we look at it again from what you have just looked at? And Papa isolates that there is COVID. Yes. From where Papa sits at the global level of looking at labor issues across the countries. Yeah. Um, the pandemic affecting someone will be treated under a circumstance not like a sick leave but a circumstance which does not even also affect your annual leave if yeah. as we understand from mauli's employer he is not going to get the leave that had been arranged in august his fiance also scheduled her leave for august it is obvious the two of them would have prepared invitations, done a lot of things yeah. around this time. They would have paid for uh, uh, places to, you know, have their honeymoon and so on and so forth. What can they do in this circumstance? All right, something. I, I will isolate it in terms of two areas. Mm. There's the law and then there's the relationship aspect. And I think Papa did the, I mean, elaborate discussion on the relationships. Right. And of course, the employment relationship is law, but it's also a relationship because you need your staff to be in good spirits right. and then to give so that they can give their all. Mm. But on the, con- I mean, contrary wise, you have to also consider that COVID has brought a lot of unexpected development in That's our relationships. That's right. I will maintain that during the lockdown, it's a different scenario, but the post lockdown it's, it's totally different I mean, situation altogether. Right. And in, this, and in ask, this particular situation, yes. there has not been a test to show that Mauli is positive. It is yes. just a suspicion. Yes. And he's saying that his employer is aware that he's asthmatic. And we know that asthmatic mm-hmm. people may be more exposed. Yes. You know, more vulnerable. So yes. on what basis, without any, like you suggested earlier, without any medical certification, 
would he say, take this period rather as your leave, when it had already been arranged for August, and in fact, when there is opportunity for sick leave? Yeah, what, what you know, in UK, for instance, what um, the government did during the I mean, during this period, you know, um, especially the lockdown, a lot of companies folded up and had to even let workers go home. The government decided to absorb the salaries, the income of 80, I mean, up to 80% of their income right. so that they will not be worse off. Mm. What they actually encouraged workers to do was workers who were high risk. Uh, and I'm sure Mauli will fall into the high risk category because of um, if he's exposed to the COVID, he's likely to suffer more than the ordinary person. Mm. Such workers were even encouraged, you, you can let such workers go, mm. and then the government will take care of their income. Unfortunately, we don't have that experience in Ghana. Mm. Yeah. Yes, but don't forget that the employer's right to also terminate your employment has not been taken away All because right. of the COVID per se. Right. And so if you become an overbearing employee, you are making it difficult for the, for the employer-employee relationship. I would say that the best approach is to discuss. However, at the law stance, if the empl employer thinks this is the best time for you to go on leave, and it is not detected by sick, certified sickness, mm. then he is right within, his, within the law to ask you to go on leave. It will be different if um, the employer asks you to go and leave, if you test positive and you are certified to maybe, um, now there's a debate between isolation and quarantine. Right. You are certified by the medics to self-isolate or maybe quarantine. That's mm. a different scenario altogether. But once you don't have that certification mm. or you are not required within the protocols to go on quarantine or self-isolate, I think if the empl employer thinks the best approach is for you to go and leave, um, I think he's right. So, so can we can we answer the question to can we answer this question? If I tested positive, and by the dictates of law now, yeah. I am supposed to be quarantined or be in isolation at least for fourteen days or more. Is my employer entitled to treat that period as leave? A sick leave. That's sick leave, yeah, we agree. Straightforward so, sick leave. So yeah. sick leave, which means I will still be entitled to my annual leave. Yes. yes. Okay. If my employer says that's the way I want to work at it, if you get tested positive, you will go on part of your leave rather than sick leave. What can I do? It's important it's, it's illegal. Sorry, what did you say? It is illegal. So what can I do? You, you know, you, you can, when there's a breach of the employment relationship, right. um, the Act 651, that's the Labor Act prescribes certain scenarios, you can actually report to the Labor Commission right. to take action or even the Chief Labor, labor Officer mm -hmm. to inter intervene on your behalf. Because right. I always advise that employment relationship, just like marriage or any close relationship, your first resolve is not to go to court. Mm. Otherwise, you spoil the atmosphere. Right. So you can engage a superior to, to discuss the matter. If you are a unionized environment, then you can also engage the union, and the union will be able to engage the, the management on this matter. Right. Okay. Gentlemen, hold something, on. Let me, yes, I, yes. Uh, Papa, quickly, and then I'll take a couple of questions for I you. I think the, the, the discuss that... Ernest talks about, which I also talked about earlier, mm. it's not just based on the relationship as if there's no legal backing. Both the Constitution and Article 36, if I'm not wrong, mm. which talks about the state encouraging participation of workers in decision making at the, at the workplace, mm. plus the um, uh, Section 20 of the law, uh, plus good faith provisions in the Act enjoins that discussion which would avoid a dispute mm. in this situation. And both parties are supposed to come to that discussion in good faith. And okay. the law says good faith means you're working hard to come to an agreement. Mm. So right. it is not like, you know, the, the employer has some, you know, cut blanche to insist. Mm. The employer has an obligation mm. to 
you know, to come to the table in good faith, right. recognize mm. the gentleman's concerns, mm. and put their argument across as to the arrangement of the work. All right. And come to a consensus. My uh, my point my my point is if they don't do that, then and they take away the gentleman's right to participate in the decision making process, mm -hmm. then I think they will be they will be wrong in law. Okay. I think so let me take a couple of questions from our viewers for you. But uh, whilst we take that, I want you to contemplate on this situation. Can my employer, just by looking and observing me at work, decide that I should immediately get out of the workplace and commence my leave on suspicion of COVID? Just, just this scenario. Now, let me uh, take the questions for you. Um, Amuzu, uh, Amuzu is asking, can you ask... Uh, your members, if uh, a company, a company uh, is to receive workers who have not recovered from COVID-19, who has recovered from COVID-19. So if one has recovered from COVID-19, um, can the company receive them back? Is that the question? Okay. Then, Giorgio Fori, what if one party must necessarily suffer especially as regards the employee whose function is considered essential. Any legal remedies to the employee who has incurred cost for the event? So like Mauli's situation, if he's not giving the opportunity for leave uh, later, who takes care of his cost? Then the last uh, question I pick is Kwesi Akar. Um, I still don't understand the argument supporting the employer's right to force an employee to take annual leave at a time that is not convenient to the employee. Okay, um, Ernest explained that under a covert situation. So let's begin um, with uh, uh, Amuzu. He says, if one has recovered from covert, can they be prevented from returning to work? Any one of you? No, I don't think they can prevent them from going to, going to work. Okay. Well, I think that would be stigmatizing Amuzu, and um, stigmatization is actually something we've been preaching against. Okay. Just as you don't stigmatize an HIV patient, um, the fear of COVID-19 is that we don't also stigmatize people who have recovered. Great. Yeah. How about um, George? George's uh, George Ofori wants to know who takes the the cost that Mauli has incurred or anybody has incurred because of the change in their leave arrangements. So, as far as I'm concerned, you know, this is how I ended. Mm -hmm. This thing must be discussed, negotiated between the employer and the employee, and some and um, Mauli's costs must be part of the negotiations right. and the employer's workload concerns and you know production issues must be part of the negotiations all right and this must be done in good faith both supported by the constitution and the law right and, and so it is in this discussion mm. that all the ramifications will come out and the agreements will be held in terms of whether he'll get a special leave later to avoid any costs or you know what will happen great i almost preempted you so ns like uh, papa is saying if mauli will not be allowed to take his annual leave and this leave is deemed as having been interrupted like you presented earlier then the employer must be th thinking about the cost element yes except that i am looking at when leave is interrupted, I think we should isolate that aspect of it because exactly. you only interrupt something when it is in motion. Right. If my primary English is correct, <laughs> you you cannot interrupt something that is not already in motion. So right. if you haven't commenced your leave, mm. then I am I shudder to see how the cost a cost element will have come up, unless 
maybe I can think of you have planned your vacation. Maybe you have planned your honeymoon or your summer vacation. You have agreed with the employer. And you have bought your ticket, booked hotel, and all that. That may be a bit different. Yes, but Mauli and has already agreed, agreed with the employer on this particular yes. leave schedule. Yeah. Yes, that, that's what that's what I'm saying. That yeah. where they have discussed, agreed, and specifically planned for, yes. then I think there should be some discussion between the employer and the employee because that will be some costs that have been taken in anticipation. In fact, if you look at commercial remedies, if I bring commercial remedies here, mm. it will be seen as reliance cost. Okay, because it is a cost that was um in care in reliance or or in expectation that he's going on leave and right, because right. that leave has been approved right i will be entitled to let me also add that um even though i will argue that you are not entitled to a predefined leave date as to when as to when you start your leave it's not cast in stone ah, but when you started you said that at the start of the year there must be a schedule and the employees must be called to agree what is that for that is only for guidance that's only for guidance and for planning purposes because mind you even if in the course of the leave the employer is it's mandated to interrupt how much more when you have not even started okay but you can i think if you realize that maybe your vacation is so important to you maybe because of your family circumstances you are required to join your spouse in in abroad okay or, so you need to have your leave on a predefined time of the year mm. what i would say is that you can negotiate that and agree once you agree in writing as part of your employment terms, then the employee can, I'm sorry, the employer cannot take that away from you because it is contract. Mm. And if he is taking that away from you, he needs your express consent. Okay. But if that has not been categorically agreed and signed for, then it will be a bit difficult. The question I insist. asked earlier is outstanding. I'll take a quick break, return and have your responses very quick to the question I asked before I took questions from uh, Amuzu, uh, George, and uh, I think we had the last question um, uh, that was from, yes, we'll return to that quickly. You're welcome back to Covered and the Law, your legal light and health law in these trying times. And my guest, Papa Kwesi uh, Dankwa, former head of legal and administration of the Ghana uh, Trades Union Congress and NS Osei Afo lawyer and member of the Institute of Human Resource Management Practitioners, Ghana. Uh, thank you also very much for uh, once again making the time and to assist uh, our many viewers with and empower them with this knowledge. Now, uh, the last question I was referring to obviously has been answered. Um, let's take a question from Equia and then I want us to conclude with you guys telling us if you say the leave is a right and it is an entitlement why can't i negotiate around it why can't yes. i accrue it or accumulate it and so on and so forth so let's take a question from a queer a queer um Osei says thanks for this discussion i agree with the panelists the distinction i pick from uh the case in question is that mauli is being asked to uh, take his annual leave in lieu of sick leave. He is not being asked to take leave because of any work-related emergency, etc. Can he not be given compensation or compensation compensation leave, compassionate leave instead? Okay, thank you very much. So uh, the way Ekuya just put that question, what do you have to say? Compassionate leave. You guys are familiar with that. That's why I said you can in the discussions the most practical way i see this going forward is to fall on section 23 under special leave and compassionate leave will be a special leave that is granted in i mean in practice when you have no other leave left but you have an emergency to take care of okay you thank know. you so that's that's why i put it that way that special leave will be the best way for the employer to an employee to get out of this this right. difficulty. Thank you. We have one question to take from Zoom, uh, and let's take that question right away. Isaac. 
Isaac Sogbaji, go ahead and ask your question. Okay, so Isaac is not ready. Uh, now, can, you, can we come in now? Ernest, can we start with you? Um, sure. And my question was, can my employer say I am back from, um, I, I, I'm going on isolation or treatment or quarantine and therefore that is the period he wants to treat us leave? So, so something I think um, the issue is if you are back from isolation, you have you mean you have finished serving the mandatory isolation period. Mm. Yes, if you are finished serving and he wants you to take your leave on that during that period, I think that would be right can, for the can, employee. Can employer my employer to say I should take that mandatory period as part of my annual leave? No, no. Okay. He doesn't have that right. He can the say mandatory... I should take that as part of my sick leave. No, yeah. sick leave is totally like um, if if um, you read my article, I try to isolate the different categories of leave, mm. and I I identify some leave as event based leave. Mm. Sick leave is one such leave, and because it is triggered by sickness, once you meet that parameter, it's isolated and totally different from your annual leave. Okay. So if you are proceeding on a sick leave, then it cannot be converted into an annual leave under any circumstances. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> right. Um, Isaac, Isaac Sogbaje. <laughs> yes. Yes, go ahead with your question. <laughs> Okay, so I said, I want to find out. Um, in this case, we don't uh, we don't really have we have teachers who were not um, able to be paid by their employers. So on that case, they were asked to proceed on. on I don't know. Okay, so that's that's a major difficulty there, but that's a question that we may be able to preempt. Um, uh, Papa, what happens to teachers, particularly those in private institutions, private schools, and because there was no work, they were asked to go on unpaid leave. What 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 is that? Yes. Um, so this is this is this is pre the lockdown this this was part of the emergency measures that's I, I right. suspect that's right yes so under those emergency measure conditions because as we say the, there's a, a big market failure then leave is one of the ways to assess you know give you space to assess the situation especially if it does not um, interrupt the employment relationship, okay. you know. So that is fair, but the leave must be with pay. If the leave is going to be without pay, then this must be discussed with the employees for them to know the conditions under which you are not going to pay them. Okay, you know, let's for, hear NS briefly for, on that. NS, yeah. um, because of COVID and schools are not going back, particularly at certain levels. There's only JHS, SHS, and universities that are back. Those who do not have the opportunity to go back and teach, um, they, the employer doesn't want to terminate them. The employer says, go on unpaid leave. Is that not okay? Yeah, and in fact, this has become a very popular issue in this period because there are a lot of private organizations that's virtually cannot pay their, their, their employees because of because they are not productive mm. in this period. And even, even if you force them, they can't pay you. The challenge is, I think the best way out, if you ask me, is to terminate the employment relationship. Of course, you can have your discussion with the, with the staff, with the employee, employees and all that. The, the technical issue is that it is likely to fall under Section 65, which deals with redundancy. Okay. Because if you look at Section 65 of the Labor Act, it talks about if there are changes in the operations or the way you do amalgamation. I mean, so many changes. And this is a change that is coming 
to your employment, not necessarily due to technology, but due to the circumstances we find ourselves. So it is a sort of redundancy. I will define it as such. How, 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 does, how, as, how does the situation of uh, force majeure, as we see, you know, become redundancy? I think we should be very careful in defining employment force relationship majeure. as force majeure. I've seen a exactly. lot of people raising force majeure, force majeure, force majeure. Mm. Force majeure is a contractual provision. Mm. Have you checked your employment relationship? Do you see force majeure in it? Okay. If it is not there, you cannot raise force majeure as if it is just carte blanche. How about, that how about kills force majeure sister? <laughs> 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 you, you know, you know, those special circumstances, those special provisions mm. are contractual provisions. Okay. That come in to ameliorate or mitigate the difficulties in performing contractual obligations. Okay. And if you want to raise the issue of such um clauses, they must be provided for in the in your agreement, whether it's a contractual agreement or commercial agreement or whatever it is. Okay. If it is not there, you can't rely on it. All right. And say that force majeure has occurred. Okay. I'll give the last word in 30 seconds to yes, Papa, um, Papa Dankwa. Something. I, no employer can ask you to go on leave without discussing it with you. It is your leave. The employer cannot do that. So the law says the employer can only interrupt if, if based on necessity. So I think this is how, you know, the right. employer must discuss the leave with you. All right. You guys Thank must you. agree. Thank you. And then you take the leave. Thank you so very much, gentlemen. Ernest Sosaya Afo, uh, lawyer and member of the Institute of Human Resource uh, Management Practitioners, Ghana, and Papa uh, Kwesi Dankwa, former head of legal and administration at the TUC Ghana. Thank you all so very much.